My name is Crystal Jones Prather. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering, and my research focuses on engineering microbes for chemical production. Our work focuses on microbial production of chemicals from a slightly different perspective than maybe you may have heard about before. Rather than focusing on natural products that microbes already make, what we try to do is to engineer them to make compounds that wouldn't normally be found in nature or that wouldn't be found through pathways that have already been described. So one of those pathways we're working on is towards a compound called glucaric acid. We've been working on this for a number of years and we're excited about its potential to be used as a renewable resource for a monomer that can be used for a variety of materials. Biology has a very wide array of natural chemical compounds that it can make and we're used to seeing these for example in products like antibiotics, things that you might derive from a soil organism that can be used to fight disease. But we also have a large number of chemicals that come from other sources, primarily from petroleum. And as we think about how do we transition towards a society and an economy which is based on more renewable resources and less fossil fuels, then it's really helpful to think about how do we actually get biology to make compounds that it wouldn't normally make. So this is a way for us to think about expanding the so-called bioeconomy or a way of being able to get access to different chemicals, not just biofuels, but that is one example, from using renewable sugars as input and being able to access the same range of functionality that we might get from compounds that come from petroleum. The kinds of molecules that we and others work on, we really envision that they can be used for anything that you might think of a traditional chemical being used for today. So that includes not just fuels, but it includes fibers, for example. Most of our clothing doesn't come from natural sources, but actually comes from engineered materials. If you think about a laptop, a laptop we always think of in terms of electronics underneath it, but that plastic casing has a very important functionality, and that's actually derived from petroleum in most cases. If you think about the drugs that we have, the therapies or the medicines, most of those are what we call small molecules. So these are chemical compounds, the majority of which are also produced from petroleum. We can think about using our technology in order to get those same molecules. And our hope is that in using a biological approach, we can not only address some of the environmental consequences of relying on fossil inputs, but also have very economical processes that will compete with what we get from fossil fuels today. For our work, we're more concerned about chemicals than we are for fuels, and that's the other aspect of it. So if you think about the way we talk about renewable energy in this country and across the world, there are lots of different options that come into play. People talk about batteries, we talk about solar power, we talk about wind power, and in all of those cases, the way they're displacing petroleum is that the petroleum product itself, you're using it for the energy contained in those carbon-carbon bonds. So you're actually processing that into something else. Usually you're burning it or combusting it in some way that you get CO2, that's carbon dioxide, water, and other gaseous products. And you're really trying to use that material for the energy. If we think about the other way in which petroleum feedstocks are used, now we're talking about using carbon for the mass that's contained within it and for the function that comes with that mass. And if we're not trying to burn it, and instead we're trying to get some specific functionality. So for example, if we want breathable materials, rather than now being able to replace that with something like silicon, you really need to have carbon replaced with carbon. And so if we think about now, where do we get other carbon from, then we have to have carbon that comes from fixing the CO2 in the air, that comes from photosynthesis, that turns into biomass, and those biomass sugars that result can be used now to convert into other products that will give us this functionality that we need and to do it by replacing or displacing the petroleum feedstocks.